Greetings, friends. I am your AJ. There are many AJs out there, but I am yours, and that means you get to make me do things to entertain you. Now, the following clips are from my stream where I complete the secret goat meat mission. Not once, but twice, and give long, rambling explanations of how I thought it works. Well, I was about 50% wrong. Though roughly five minutes after my two-hour stream, I managed to get in touch with Joshu, one of the astronauts devs, who agreed to a brief interview so we can get the actual answers. So I'm just going to use this voice over here to give you those answers in a concise format. And then if you want to see how I did it or what the GOAT mission looks like, read the lore pages for yourself, or you want to see exactly what Joshu said, you can watch the rest of it. First off, there's a semi-hostile faction in the game that we generally call The Meat. The Meat is the result of an experiment by a corporation whose name I don't remember and I don't really care, honestly. Uh, you can see the deep lore in my video or find it yourself if you want. Now, it's what it sounds like. Giant blobs of meat that continuously expand to cover derelicts where you find it, often found next to dead human bodies marked by ghostly handprints. Uh, if you're not prepared, and especially if you're slow, the meat can absolutely surround you and unalive you. At a minimum, it can easily disable your EVA suit. Uh, the meat doesn't start hostile, but certain pockets of the meat, uh, not necessarily the entire mass, will attack you if you stand around, around near it too long. Now, if you want to fight the meat, guns are practically useless. A Weber laser torch is slightly better, but will still wear out after about half a dozen uses as an impromptu energy weapon. Ideally, you want a solid melee weapon like a katana, katana spear, or machete. And uh, if you don't have armed weapon skills, which hopefully you got during character creation, um, it's good to find an NPC who has those skills who you can just sub in for you. Now, uh, even if you have a good weapon, you should expect to get very tired very quickly fighting the meat. So you should probably not bother trying to eradicate it from a derelict unless it's a fairly small mass to begin with. Like, say, you know, about a dozen... Uh, squares is pretty easy to mop up with, you know, a, a decent amount of effort. Now, a mass that takes up half your screen could take up like to half an hour to slowly chip away at. And when I say that, I mean, you have to just go in with, say, a spear and just stab, 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 and then go back, take a break, maybe repair your armor if you got hit by the meat, uh, and then go back out, stab, 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 stab. If you've got a, uh, a vacuum suit instead of an EVA, honestly, I wouldn't even bother at that point. It's just uh, not exactly hopeless, but uh, it's just too much of a pain to deal, deal with. Now, um, if there are several masses that are big enough to take up half your screen, then it's practically hopeless. Uh, even if you are really great at combat, you got all the time in the world, the reality is, is that those several masses are going to expand faster than you can destroy them. Um, and even if they don't, you're probably gonna run out of, your, your, your character's gonna get too tired, uh, you're gonna wear your weapon down. Uh, the, the likelihood that you will actually defeat the meat is pretty slim. Now, destroying a block of meat will drop things like uh, stacks of edible meat, which you can take with you, and you can actually just eat, apparently raw, uh, which increase your healing and your metabolism. And it might, I'm not 100% sure about this, it might uh, get rid of permanent conditions. So if you have you know, slow metabolism, it might just bump you to normal metabolism. And if you have normal, it, it'll temporarily bump you to like a fast metabolism. Uh, other things that will drop, hooves, horns and eyes now once you have four hooves two horns and one eye you can build an art altar to the goat without end a mysterious psychic entity implied to be commanding the meat you can get clues to building that altar from npcs who you ask about the goat parts that you found upon building that altar you can commune with it to start a multiple choice style adventure which ends with a confrontation with the goat without end. There are three endings, the zealot ending, the cultist ending, and the science ending. The zealot ending will give you an extremely powerful melee weapon, a bone spear. 
and it will also make all further meat spawns stop. Uh, this is the only one that I have done in this patch of the game. Uh, I have also done the cultist ending in a previous previous patch, but I've not been able to replicate it yet. I'm gonna have to do that in another video. Uh, but yes, so the cultist ending will give you a permanent boost to your character after you submit yourself to the goat, which, if I recall correctly, includes an immunity to CO2 poisoning. Uh, kind of marginal, but you know, I, I think that's not the only bonus you get. I I don't know. Like I said, it's been a while, and they might have even changed it. Once I know for sure, once I actually complete it, make another video, I'll show you then. Um, I believe the science ending, and this is just my, my understanding based on stuff I've seen in the game. I can't 100% confirm it, but I believe that the science ending will allow you to build a planter, like kind of, you know, a, a little scaffolding um, to grow plants. But instead of growing plants, you're growing your own meat. Uh, unfortunately, you can't just choose which ending you want. There are hidden counter variables for each ending, and you only get the one with the highest score. Your zealot score is based on the number of meats you destroy. Your cultist score is based on how many times you commune with the meat in person by listening to the meat blobs, you know, talking to them and asking for gifts. Uh, your science score is pretty much the most complicated and hardest to rank up. Uh, so here's a list of things that does it. One is when you right click a piece of food and click long for better food. Two is when you right click a packet of trenchers and ponder the mystery meat. Three is watching the news on TV related to the meat. Four is when you discuss news of infinite food with an NPC. Five is when you like, I think, hack terminals for the first time to find out, you know, stuff about the meat. Uh, and then six is eating the meat itself. So uh, I went uh, into the console to check these conditions, and I found that I had a zealot score of 56, at the end of my screen, that is, uh, a cultist score of 47, and a science score of 10. Uh, which means that if I wanted to go... Um, to improve my science score to the point where it's higher than my zealot score, I would have to eat 47 meats, which is a, a lot because you don't get hungry that fast in this game. Maybe I'll get hungry a little faster because I'm, um, I've got a faster metabolism because that's what the meat does. But uh, considering that most of what you'll do with the meat is fight it instead of pondering a trencher's meal or eating the meat or trying to talk to it, especially since the meat will proactively attack you while you're trying to talk, almost everybody is going to get pushed into the zealot ending, even if they're deliberately trying for something else. So uh, now that you know the background, if you want to get a different ending, if you want to role play as a cultist who serves the goat without end, then uh, hopefully this is helpful to you. Um, but yeah, those are the highlights. If you want to see more, please enjoy the rest of the video. And thank you so much for watching. All right, bye.